Cool, cool. I like your background. Oh yeah, I, I did a uh, um, did a little bit of Photoshop on it because uh, right down here was like all yellow, so I just put the thing down there again oh, to nice. fill out the screen. Very cool. But I'm here with uh, Francis Galupi, the director and writer of uh, The Last Stop in Yuma County. Um, yeah, it, this movie's rad. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, Thank like, you for having me. I, I was getting uh, kind of uh, sort of breakdown vibes, the Kurt Russell movie, uh, or like yeah. uh, Dust Till Dawn, minus the vampire stuff at the end. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I haven't got that in a long time, but I remember like somebody said that when I sent them a, the script like years ago. But uh, yeah, definitely. I can see that. What? How, how long did it take to get this going? Because uh, according to your IMDb, this looks like to be your feature film debut. Yes, yeah. Oh, man, this thing has been... Uh four and a half years of my life um where it's just every day is the last stop in yuma county <laughs> i was going through my email the other day and looking for the first time i ever like sent a draft to somebody and i think it was like in october of 2019 so um it's been a huge part of my life for the past almost five years um but that's that's independent filmmaking for you well uh, a couple questions uh one this cast is amazing uh jim cummings Joc jocelyn donahue richard Brake. Fies on yeah. love big you have big worm in this that's so awesome yeah I got a big worm. Yeah, yeah he's amazing yeah but uh that how the uh, i guess how did the uh uh cast come together and also the set well we'll get to the setting but let's just talk about the cast first i guess uh yeah so the cast um there was like it, it really i sort of had been like I had this list of indie darlings that i've been dying to work with um you know i watched i saw like the vast of night saw Sierra McCormick in that movie. I thought she was incredible. Put her on that list. It was like, she'd be perfect for Sybil. Or I saw Nick Logan and I care a lot. So when it came time to casting, it was, it was really like, I, I wrote letters to these actors and had um, my casting director, David Guglielmo, send them out and like, um, just got extremely lucky um, with this cast. Um, there was a version of this film early on where I had optioned the screenplay um, to a company and they were sort of doing the, they were going to make it for a lot more. And they were sort of doing the foreign sale, like pre-market thing or, pre, you know, whatever the, the foreign sales pre-market. Yeah. Uh, and it just was a nightmare. I mean, we were, um, it was a lot of gatekeeping and, you know, they wanted certain names with like that quote unquote value. And it was just, you know, butting heads for a long time. So when I got the rights back then it was like, okay, I'm going to, I want to make this movie the way I've always envisioned it. And that was with, you know, Jim Cummings and Jocelyn Donahue and Richard Brake and Nick Logan. And fortunately I got really lucky, you know, um, I sent the script to Jim and he, I had never met Jim before, but I was a big fan and he called me um, and that night, same night and was like, Hey, do you want to come over and have, coffee and we talked about south park for three hours and uh by the end he was just like i want to do it so it was really insane man yeah so that's a secret sauce just when you when you get to sell a screenplay talk south park and dark so talk south park yeah exactly that that actually happened too with nick logan i think we also talked about south park for hours and it was like all right let's make this movie <laughs> Also, I want to talk about the setting because uh, other than uh, Richard Brake and Nick Logan's character showing up and ruining everything, uh, it seems yeah. like a place I'd kind of like to stop by on a on a trip. Uh, where 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 did you find this place, and how how did shooting there go? Yeah, it was great. It was we had a, twenty days to shoot it. Um, I sort of wrote the script based exactly on this location. So I found the location first, took pictures, kind of drew an overhead, and then crafted the script out of the location. Um, it's a movie set. There's no electricity or plumbing there. So that was all had to be brought in. Uh, funny enough, there was a handful of times while we were shooting that people pulled into the gas station trying to get gas. Um, yeah, we had the, the truck's not here. You're gonna have to wait a while. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that happened a few times. Um, but yeah, it's, it's sort of, I didn't know this at the time when I found it, but it, it's a very overused film set. Like, I mean, they shot, Devil's Rejects, House of a Thousand Corpses, Identity, a lot of TV shows here, um, music videos. Um, I was actually, uh, before making this movie, I was producing at a record label for a couple of years. And I think like a, a couple of weeks before shooting the movie, I ended up just randomly shooting like this like rap music video at this location like a couple of weeks before shooting the movie. So yeah, it's used a lot. That kind of give you like a little 
sort of warm up exercise for the for the movie itself like oh well, we did this thing in the rap video and it worked real well we're gonna try it again for the movie uh, that sort of thing no we kind of shot mainly in the motel area for that video but like um i mean i i was calling the location weekly and seeing like when they were shooting if they had any days off my cinematographer and i would go out there and we sort of photo boarded the entire movie so i was like constantly going to the location and like just like hanging out there and you know taking pictures and you know um rehearsing the the oneers and some of the more intricate shots like um on my phone so i spent time as much time as i could there before so, so you said this was a set it wasn't an actual spot how did you when did you go to this place the first time like you you said that this inspired the script like yeah I why, why I were you there the first time I just saw it online. I think I was looking for like, I'm always writing period pieces. So I think I was just like Googling like period diners or like what are, period gas stations. I don't know. And then I came across four aces on, on online and then I drove out there and I was like, yeah, I want to shoot a movie here. This place is really cool. But uh, yeah, it was <laughs> logistically, you know, it's, there's a, it's a, there's a lot of traffic. On, in that intersection so there's a lot of cars driving by so that was sort of a pain in the ass to like um control that you know had to we had to um it, it, yeah it fucked up a lot of the long take shots um if a car drove by i was like god damn it we got to start over but other than that like you know it was kind of per i mean i literally wrote the script based on the location so it couldn't have been more perfect in a sense also, uh, Jim Cummings' character, he's a knife salesman. The, those knives that he had, are those uh, just prop knives or are those like the real deal? So I bought those when I was writing the script. They are uh, they're a set of vintage Cutco knives. Um, and it's funny. I, <laughs> I bought like this vintage set and then our prop master was like, well, we got to get like another set and like dull them we gotta have the heroes and you know uh so anyway i had to go on ebay and like find an exact another set of these cutco knives and then like we sort of you know went through a, a, a few different iterations of like the color of the box and like we changed the um the latch on it and uh, put a little odachi knife symbol uh that we got engraved in the inside which you can never you'd never see it in the movie and i'm kind of bummed because like it's i actually have I have it right here in my office, but it's a really cool logo on the inside that you never really get to see. Also, uh, I'll dance around spoilers, but um, the first time I watched this, the opening scenes, there's a lot of uh, little, I noticed there's a lot of clues that come into play later. Um, yeah. And a lot of details. Uh, how much of this is comes from when you're writing the script and how much of that comes from you're shooting and go oh we should probably get this scene because this would make sense for later on it's all in the script um yeah so like are you referring to like the fuel truck showing the fuel truck that's like yeah so there's a there's a truck uh uh jim cummings is the only one that sees the uh the rhubarb pie thing and yeah then, yeah uh, yeah yeah. I'll, yeah I'll just leave it at that but like <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, just no, little details you. like that yeah, yeah. No, that's that was all in the script. I mean, it was um obviously like my cinematographer and I we prep a lot. Like we shot we use we shot list, we use shot designer, we previs, we photo board, like prep a lot. So obviously like sometimes like when we're working on, you know, like solidifying the shot list, it will things will pop up and I'll be like, ah, you know, going back to the script and kind of adding that in. Um I'm constantly going back to the script. I mean, I was rewriting stuff um during production. So um but yeah, at least like the the setups and payoffs that was all written in the script. Um, you know, I'm a sucker for that stuff. Um, I Back to the Future is one of my favorite movies, and you know, it's one of those movies that like has so many. It's it's a it's a masterpiece in terms of its screenplay and its setup and payoffs. So I'm always trying to kind of uh, look at that as a north star in terms of like uh, if you set something up, you got to pay it off. I'm sure this thing's just loaded with the uh, details. Some of them I, I notice, I'm sure hundreds of them will just continue to go right over my head after the 20th <laughs> watch. But like, what's a, what's a detail that you put in this that you're pretty sure everyone's going to miss, but uh, that maybe you put in there hoping that someone might find. Yeah, there's a few, there's, um, you know, there's a whole thing. So um, Erlene and Robert, the old couple that come in, there's a whole reference to David Gorish, um, the Waco siege. 
dude um that she talks about and like she's like oh my grandson just moved to waco uh, uh what's he do out there he plays guitar and he sings at the mount carmel center so that, that he moved there and started playing guitar in 1981 so that's sort of the only reference as to what year it is and i basically had to justify why how i can kill off this old couple and what better way to do it than you know he they are she is the grandmother of this uh you know mass murderer oh, um, that, that, <laughs> that that's a good one that one right over my head <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there's a lot of like fun, like stuff like that. You know, the the whole thing with Miles and Sybil um, talking in the car. He's referencing the movie Rafifi. If you haven't I seen it, movie. It's a wonderful movie. Yeah. Um. So he's referencing that. Um, um. A really, really small Easter egg that I don't think anybody has caught is, uh, and it's, it's not that cool, but um, in the slow motion sequence, the Ray Orbison sequence, the shot of uh, Jocelyn in the kitchen. If you look at the clock, it says three ten. That's like kind of fun, but yeah. God damn it! <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of others, but uh, yeah, those are the the few that just kind of came to mind. Well, yeah. Um, well, anyway, I I guess we'll we'll end with this. The, we have a what's in the box segment, and uh, <laughs> in the box we pull out. It's just a bunch of uh, names and movies, and we pull one out each week and watch it for the following week. And, and these are movies movie that too. what's that? Richard Brake says what's in the box in Last Stop. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that, well, that's probably not a reference to our <laughs> no, podcast. No, no, probably no, no, seven. No. I, I, I heard somebody saying, like, oh, is that a reference to seven? And I was like, no, I think in the in the script it said what's in the case. And then Rich <clears throat> just said what's in the box. And I never realized so I was like, oh, people are gonna think this is a reference to seven and whatever i'm going yeah. to tell people to reference the cinematic so thanks for there that. you go <laughs> do it yeah yeah go for it but anyway we have people put movies in the box and these are movies that are either personal to you or a movie that you think is really good and just no one ever talks about um i think people talk about this movie a lot but i'm just going to say it is funny games um i don't know if you've ever seen it yes uh um we had Michael someone Hunter. put the the remake in but we'll go yeah. ahead and put the original in because that's good excuses any to watch yeah, it yeah. twice. Cool, cool. Yeah. I mean, they're both like, you know, it's a shot for shot remake, same director. Um, they're both fantastic. I actually saw the remake first. Um, but uh yeah, I that movie kind of changed my life in a weird way. Like I I that was coming out of the theater after watching funny games. I think that was the moment where I realized I wanted to make movies. I remember the watching that in the theater and the scene where they pick up the remote and just rewind the actual movie. I'm like, what the hell am I watching? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the thing. It was just like, yeah, you can make a movie with like four characters in a room and, and it has that sort of effect on you. It's It was really, really inspiring. And just sort of like coming out and being like, I didn't know you could do that. Like, I, I didn't know you can, can just, you know, drown the, f it just kill the, the, the heroine at the end and just have like, that's it. The, the move like you know it was just it blew me away it was and so he and he does it just so nonchalantly like oh, no this is what we're doing yeah. now yeah no fucks given uh it was um yeah riveting riveting well yeah uh last stop in uni yuma county comes out in theaters and on digital may 10th watch it in theaters if you can uh right. I I can imagine this being like just a a banger like in a with a full crowd because like as fun as it was for me to watch the screeners like I mad I cannot wait for this to come out in theaters and just watch it with a full crowd because this oh, movie okay. is incredibly fun and yeah. congratulations thank you so much man I appreciate you thank you.